Alzheimer's disease, so the, the commercial sells you a book and, and some, uh, some supplements to help you reduce the enzyme. You don't need to reduce the enzyme. You need to figure out why is the body inflaming? What is the toxicity that's getting into the system? You don't need magical remedies. We don't need to kill disease. It's a, you know, it's a subtle point, but it's an important point. We don't want to look at disease as being some invader that came into the body. That disempowers us. That takes our ability our, way, our, our uh, ability to control our biochemistry away from us. It says that we've just been invaded by some outside entity. When we understand that we're the outside entity in the sense that we're the ones putting the stuff into the body, for the most part, it puts power back in our hands. And that's really what this is about. It's about beating anybody up. It's about taking the power back. The triangle of disease, once we understand it, takes the power back from the medical model and puts it in our hands. The medical model will, will do everything it can do every day to further entrench itself, to lock itself into our lives, but we don't need it once we understand how all this whole thing happens. So the triangle of disease, the three points of disease, work their nasty magic, their black magic in destroying the body through inflammation. And inflammation is a defensive response. That's the key right there, folks. Inflammation is a defensive response. Inflammation is a protective response. It's, by definition, when the inflammatory process is running amok, something is attacking the body, by definition. And then it goes into a vicious spiral because over time, as the defensive response becomes chronic, it's not supposed to be chronic, it's not supposed to go on every day of our lives, every hour of our lives. When it's chronic, you get pockets of cell death because nutrients can't get through the inflammatory buildup. Inflammation really means fibers and fluids and a beaver's dam, I like to call it. So on the other side of the beaver's dam, you've got pockets of death. And death leads to more inflammation. In fact, I just, it's one of the most important articles I've ever downloaded. I uh, got this yesterday and I was, so, such an important article. Headline, this is from the journal Nature Immunology. Headline. Dying cells regulate the immune system. Technically dying epithelial cells, but all cells. Dying epithelial cells regulate the immune system. This is the headline. Oh, the second part, finding, this finding could aid treatment of inflammatory and allergic diseases. In other words, they're going to find drugs for this. But you don't need drugs. What is causing the cells to die is the inflammation. And this is where the downward spiral goes, uh, begins. You get cells that are dying, you get an inflammatory process to block those cells off. You get more cells dying because nothing can get through the inflammatory, inflammatory wall. And this whole thing leads to the downward spiral we call inflammatory disease. And it all starts from the triangle of disease and the mediator is the blood. That's where dirty blood comes in. Between the, all of these, these major ideas, the triangle of disease, inflammation, and the inflammatory response, and dirty blood, and finally all diseases sell disease, you got everything you need to know about how the body breaks down and why we get sick. And none of it requires a doctor. None of it requires a drug. In fact, drugs are only going to make it worse. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll be back with your phone calls on the Bright Side right after this. Don't go away. Hey, welcome back to The Bright Side. I am Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for joining us. Got a couple lines open for you. We'll, we'll get your calls here in just a minute. 844-236-6010 is our number. Perhaps you saw this article from JAMA or heard about this article from JAMA. Proton pump inhibitors may be associated with increased risk of dementia. So-called proton pump inhibitors are the latest craze when it comes to heartburn drugs, PPI drugs the most popular heartburn drugs. How do they work? They suppress the digestive acids. They suppress uh, the production of digestive juices. Now, if digestive juices are in, if there's juices in the digestive system to help you process food, what do you think is going to happen if you, if you suppress their, the production of these juices? Of course you're going to run into problems uh, with nutrient absorption. It can't help but happen. Surprise, surprise. Uh, it's been known uh, since pe these proton pump inhibitors came out that the uh, low levels of magnesium or uh, low levels of magnesium, low levels of iron, low le levels of B12, 
are associated with these kinds of drugs, but it's just common sense. You don't need a study to tell you any of this stuff. The fact is, uh, Losec, Prilosec, uh, uh, Prevacid, there's a whole bunch of them now. They can't help but cause problems with nutrient absorption, and ultimately you're going to have risks of things like dementia. Dementia is not the pro a weird enzyme, some weird thing that's getting into your system. It's just a, a way the body breaks down, except it's breaking down in the brain. Here's another one. Delirium, muscle weakness, among overlooked symptoms of sepsis. What is sepsis? Dirty blood. So, delirium uh, it counts as uh, a symptom of Alzheimer's disease. Results from, from sepsis, from dirty blood. You see these things happen. These common mechanisms are behind everything. Muscle weakness also, among overlooked symptoms of, uh, of sepsis. Here's another good one. Lipid-based diets effectively combat Alzheimer's disease. Where have you heard that before? It's from the journal Current Alzheimer's Research yesterday. Lipid-based diets, fat diets, fatty diets, fat in your diet, coconut oil, good fats, avocado, butter. All right. I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Let's go to Pam in California. Welcome to the Bright Side, Pam. What's going on? Hi. Good morning, Ben. It's really good to, to speak with you. And, uh, thank you. Thank you. I've been listening to you. to you for a long time. But, oh, nice. But I'm, what I'm calling about is to get your opinion on maybe a course of action. Um, what this is is, and this has been going on for 8 to 10 years, the, the muscles in my left eye have started to turn inward, and I am not, um, and it started out intermittently, and what it, what it manifests is, is double vision. If I try to look with both eyes, the vision individually in each eye is okay, because I close one eye, and I can see just as well with the left eye as I can with the yeah, right eye. Yeah, but still, eye. you don't want to have to mess around that way. It sounds well, like you're, the muscles are getting weak is what's happening. Right. And they're not and, holding the eye in place. That's a, basically, you know, with all due respect, you're breaking down. I, I, I know that. <laughs> okay. So we got to turn that. that equation around. we got to turn that arrow around so but you're building up instead of breaking MRI and all that Forget stuff. it. I don't need to hear any of that stuff. Yeah, it's, you're breaking down. That's what I'm telling you. This is the simplicity of this. Now, I said simple, but not necessarily easy, because you're going to have to do a lot of things. Now, your goal should be to get stronger and stronger and stronger over time. And when I say you get stronger, I'm not just talking about your eyes. I'm talking about all of your muscles. Your muscles are part of the musculoskeletal system, which is a kind of a blend of two types of tissue. Oh, that okay, tissue's breaking down. Very quickly. Well, let me just say one last thing, and then I'll let you continue. With cortisol, because uh, I've had 12 years of unending stress taking care well, of, of course and, you're joining the club you know what george carlin used to say this he said he used to go like this i told chuck i said oh you don't like your job <laughs> well there's a support group for that it's called everyone and they meet at the bar <laughs> <laughs> you know? and it's the same thing you got cortisol everybody's got cortisol we live in this crazy stressful world so yes, you're absolutely correct. Cortisol is going to be involved. So relaxation techniques, I, we don't talk about them a lot. I do mention them periodically, but we don't talk about them a lot, but they're very important. Lowering your cortisol is critical because under conditions of elevated cortisol, your body's not going to repair. It's not going to build. You know, muscle, like everything else, is constantly breaking down and building up, breaking down and building up. If you're not building up, you're going to break down without building up. That's not a good thing. And that happens. That's the aging process. So number one is you're going to always, well, first of all, you want to, like you say, relax the body and, and lower the cortisol. Easier said than done. I understand this, but it's worth it. There's visualization techniques. There's meditation techniques. There's deep breathing techniques. There's hot tubs and hot water. There's many, many ways to relax the body. And it's very important that you do that. And don't underestimate its importance for, uh, for helping with reverse the symptomology of degenerative disease. Oxygen is also very important. I'm going to tell you st stuff, but not, I don't want you to think that it's in that, it, it's more important, the things I say first are more important. It's, you've got to do all these things. Would you address you, vision therapy? Because I do Yes, muscles. The, you, yes. you can work on the vision muscles. I'm going to tell you that. But let me tell you, the, if you're degenerating, it's not going to help you. It's going to make matters worse, actually. So we've got to get that taken care of first. Look for digestive symptoms, correct those. Use the Fucoid Z and bone soup. Bone soup for all degenerative issues. It's a source of muscle building raw material or a, a connective tissue building raw material. Um, you get that? Liquid, no less. So it goes right to work. Bone soup. 
And uh, always put a little vinegar in your bone soup to release the nutrients from that cartilage. Hyaluronic acid supplements can help you. Silica, liquid silica gel supplements can help you. Vitamin C turns the whole thing on, so make sure you're getting your Beyond Tangy Tangerine. Your ultimate EFAs, very important for anti-inflammatory effects because under conditions of inflammation, you're not going to repair. That's the omega-3 fats, which, by the way, are particularly important for the eyes, if not necessarily the connective tissue, the eyes, the eyes themselves. Uh, vitamin E, also very important when we talk about the eye, uh, the eyes and eye health. If you have any blood sugar issues, and almost guaranteed you do, do the whole blood sugar uh, diet, if you will, the anti-diabetes diet. That means low carbs, high uh, coconut oil and protein, and nutrients that help your body process those carbs. Uh, Pam, you got a million different ways that you could do this. I just, I just listed 20 different strategies. May I, say, may I say, though, I have been doing all of that. Believe me, I've been, I've been doing Dr. Wallet for 15 years. I can years. believe you, Pam. Listen, I don't think you're dishonest. I don't think you're lying no, to me. I'm, I'm just telling But where there's smoke, there's fire, sweetheart. You know, you could do all you're doing to make your house fireproof, and then you smell smoke, and you go, well, I took care of my drywall. I took care of my, uh, my fireproofing. It can't, you know, I'm doing everything. No, it doesn't matter. There's smoke, so there's fire. You know what I mean? You know, the, the whole bit, the enzymes, the this, the that, and... and You're missing something. If I was, if I was with you and, and I could follow you around, I would tell you it's probably in your food, in, in something with your foods. Pam, I'm guessing by your voice you're in your 50s or 60s, correct? Uh, yes. Okay. So, guaranteed, 100%, there's something going on in the way you're processing, uh, accumulating energy and assimilating energy from food. That's digestion. That's the first place to look. You may, if you're doing everything and you say you are, and I, I have no reason not to believe you, uh, um, and you're still not getting the results you want, focus on the digestive system first. I'm going to let you go, Pam, but okay. where there's smoke, there's fire. If the body's breaking down, that's the only way it breaks down. There's no magical fairy that's shooting an arrow into you that's causing your body to break down, even though that may be what the medical model will tell you. It's breaking down for the same reason anything else breaks down. All right, sweetheart, I hope I helped you. Thanks so much, Pam. Thank you. All right. Uh, oh, there's our music. Okay. If I, uh, hang tight if you're on hold, and we do have a couple lines open for you. We'll take a break and come back with your phone calls and more good health information on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Don't go away. The bright side, John in Michigan. What's going on? Welcome, John in Michigan. John, you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. What's what's going on, man? How can we help? Well, one is with chronic fatigue, and I also want to bring up the uh, uh, bit about weaponized mycoplasma that uh, Professor Don Scott, who's now passed on in 2011, has exposed that is affecting many people, especially women. Uh, with many of the uh, conditions that are, are just diagnosed as either uh, chronic fatigue or the other one uh, that's really popular, the P word, uh, uh, but I, I can't think of the name right now. But uh, my uh, chronic fatigue, is there something, uh, this mycoplasma attacks the flora in the gut? Yeah, yeah, here's the thing, John. That's all sexy and dramatic, and I don't deny. I, I don't dispute it. It could very well be. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if our, you know, is he saying it was intentional or it was accidentally released or the weaponized mycoplasma? What is he saying? No, it has been uh, intentional. It was developed by the military. No, I know, but was it intentionally released into the into the atmosphere or is it accidentally yes. released? Yes. Yeah, inten- through mosquitoes okay. back early. Uh, I think it was in the uh, '90s. Okay, I'm not, I'm not uh, John. Bl- I am no Pollyanna about DARPA and the Defense Department and the government. I'm, believe me, trust me, I don't just be, deny that, any of that stuff. But we can't do anything about it. What you got to do is you work where you can work. And now, as you uh, pointed out, mycoplasma is a type of living entity that, that, that uh, uh, lives in an antagonistic relationship with your natural good bacteria. So it can, definitely, it can definitely kill off your good bacteria. So what do you do? 
Well, first of all, you got to not participate in the lifestyle behaviors that kill off the bacteria to make the problem worse. Drinking chlorinated water makes it worse. Drinking fluoridated water, taking antibiotics, eating antibiotic-laden foods, uh, uh, ch uh, eating the wrong kinds of foods, uh, high sugar foods. There's all kinds of ways that we, on our own, voluntarily disrupt our microbiome. So you can't do anything about the micro mycoplasma, the weaponized mycoplasma, if they're there. But what you can do is work on your diet and digestion. Make sure, and do 